This session is part of the planning section. We will be introducing some concepts and methodologies that will help you focus on the organization of your mobilization project at a number of levels. Good planning begins by defining the elements that will have an impact on your project and then understanding the interactions between them. In this section, we will look at the different players that it is necessary to understand before you can effectively organize your project and a methodology to identify who the key players and resources are and what they should be doing. The five key concepts we will look at are affiliations, stakeholders, roles, tasks and goals. First, let us take a moment to understand the term mobilization. Mobilization is the action of bringing resources into use to achieve a particular purpose or goal. In other words, to mobilize something, whether it be an expedition to the Antarctic or the publication of data, you will need to bring together available resources and assets and use them to achieve a defined something. To mobilize, we must understand our resources. Let's break this down and look at the first part of the definition of the term mobilize and dig into what a resource is. In the context of biodiversity data mobilization, there are two types of resource. The hardware that you will use to create or manipulate digital files, for example, computers, cameras, lights and desks, and the people, the actual individuals who will work with and for the project. Specific hardware choices are unfortunately outside of the scope of this presentation, but there are references to existing resources in the e-learning platform that may be helpful. Don't be shy to ask your mentors and colleagues who have done similar projects for help. In general though, which hardware you need depends on both the type of digitization being carried out, for example, herbarium sheets or pinned insects, as well as the combination of people who will do the digitization and publication. Do not fall into the trap of buying equipment before identifying the people. So to the people. People come in many types and can be organized in many ways. And it is the connections between them that will have the most impact on the successful completion of your project. They can be broadly grouped into three levels, affiliations, stakeholders, and roles. Affiliations are very high level and most broadly represent the entity that is responsible for the management and pay of the team or individual. They are often strategic in nature. Stakeholders are groups or teams who may or may not be part of a formal management structure. They share an affiliation and a tactical theme. Roles, in this context, represent jobs or positions with a title that an individual may hold. Three affiliations are commonly a part of the biodiversity data landscape. An institutional affiliation usually accounts for teams who work for the institution that is running the project. In the context of the project, they are not specifically paid by the project. A project affiliation covers those teams and individuals that are specifically paid by the project for their part of their time. Those teams or groups who do not work for the institution and are not paid by the project specifically, but whose input is required for success, have an external affiliation. Three often encountered examples of these are local government, regional government and NGOs. Knowing the affiliations of the teams working on your project will give you a good idea of any potentially competing or supporting strategic goals, priorities, projects and agendas. It is often at this level that long to medium term plans and policies come into play, such as laws, intellectual property rights and retention policies. These can have a high impact on your project and its goals. Stakeholders represent the next level of the who in your project. These are most often the tactical units within a shared affiliation. They have responsibility for day-to-day -day running, such as managing infrastructure, curating the collection, doing the research, or paying the bills. 
Stakeholders may or may not be part of the same formal management structure, but they share an affiliation and come together to do something practical. It is important to remember that no two affiliations organize their stakeholder groups in the same way. You should never assume that someone else's structure is the same as yours. Each stakeholder group is made up of one or more roles. Roles in this context represent jobs or positions with a title that an individual may hold. Each of these roles is held by a real person who will have at least one role. It is important to understand how these roles are distributed across the different stakeholder groups. Be aware that a named role at your institution may not be in the same stakeholder group somewhere else. In some cases, even though the name of the role may be the same, that role may have different responsibilities. There's one particular role that we should spend a little time investigating, the project manager. This is the person who must keep track of scope, manage, control and mitigate change of everything, articulate and keep track of the planning process by turning high level information into detailed executable plans. They must follow through on the management of the project team so that they can meet their project objectives. They must monitor and control the work of producing the products and results and ultimately be responsible for the success of the project as measured by quality timelines and budget compliance. The second element of the definition of the term mobilize is uses. These work tasks represent which things you will need to do in order to successfully do what you said you would do. The specific set of tasks carried out by the individuals assigned to the roles and working on your project is dependent on the type of digitization that you need to do in order to create your publish publishable data set. However, they will most likely include some or all of the following tasks. Specimen staging, curation, data review, database review, image capture, transcription, data cleaning, quality checking, georeferencing, and publishing. Once identified, tasks will need to be scheduled and ordered to be effective. There are many ways to arrange tasks. Some, of course, will be more efficient than others. We will look more closely at the application of several methods for managing tasks for data mobilization in the session on organizing. This will include groupings, clusterings, and workflows. Remember that whilst there is no perfect one size fits all, digitization activities mostly have been tried at least once by someone else. There are many existing repositories of digitization protocols available online, and many are included in the course resources in the e-learning platform. The third and final element of the definition is the outcome or outcomes. Goals are the what are you going to do of the project and will have been established in the original project proposal. In fact, this is actually the place to start. Clearly re-articulating the stated deliverables of a project and when they are due is the critical first step to creating a successful implementation plan. Time should also be spent documenting any implied goals. Whilst these are often more difficult to metricize, they often speak directly to the sustainability of the project and its impact outside of its target audience. Examples of explicit stated data mobilization goals are publishing data directly to GBIF and doing it regularly, inclusion of additional supporting metadata over and above the basic Darwin core fields, taking images of an object or specimen from multiple angles or using advanced techniques such as CT scanning or electron microscopy, imaging all specimens in a collection as opposed to just the type specimens, georeferencing rather than verbatim transcription of localities, and creating and maintaining your own IPT. More implied but equally important goals include increased public awareness of local issues, the ability to use a successful project as evidence of capacity and expertise when applying for further funding, and the use of mobilized data sets to affect data-driven policy change.
you should break down high level implied or indirect goals into the direct deliverables that will move you towards your goals. For example, if your goal is capacity enhancement, then you could have specific achievements that may include setting up of a regional IPT that can be used by multiple institutions that cannot host their own, or the training of collection staff to create and update their own IPT resources for publication. If the goal is increased public outreach, deliverables could include increased visitation to your collections web pages, or increased numbers of observations by local and citizen scientists. In this way, it becomes possible to track the progress of the goal and ultimately report on its success. Having defined your goals, gathered your resources and organised your tasks, you now are in a position to document the landscape and realistically assess where gaps, bottlenecks and barriers may exist in your implementation plan. One way to do this is to take your list of existing stakeholders, associate roles to them and then assign to each role the tasks that you have decided they will need to carry out. If any stakeholder or role seems to have too many tasks, then this is likely to become a bottleneck in your project. A task with no assigned role indicates a gap. Effective early assessment of resources should mitigate capacity and practical barriers, whilst identifying competing goals and conflicting affiliations will help to avoid cultural and institutional barriers. You will see more of this process in the online planning exercises. In review then, Good planning begins by defining the elements that will have an impact on your project and understanding the interactions between them. We have looked at the classifications of individuals and groups of people and the ways in which they interact with each other that may support or block progress in the completion of your project. We then briefly discussed the need to identify the practical tasks that will need to be accomplished. Lastly, and arguably significantly, we emphasised that a workable implementation plan begins with a thorough review of the goals and deadlines of the project. Using the criteria we have discussed, you should now be able to assess the environment that your project exists within using three practical steps. First, review your goals. Do you know exactly what you need to do and when? Then, research tasks similar to yours. Has anyone else in the community done a similar project? What did they do? Thirdly, review your available resources. Start with the people. Who do you have to help you? And only then see what equipment is already available and any that you may need to buy. Hopefully, the proposal project design and the landscape in which it was scoped are still valid at implementation time. This should, however, never be taken for granted. Things change. It is often the case that many months and sometimes years will have passed between the original submission, funding and project start. The original project staff may even no longer be involved. It is imperative, therefore, that the deliverables as stated in the proposal are reviewed critically before implementation before any hardware is bought or tasks begun. To paraphrase Gandalf in the book The Hobbit, you don't need a mighty warrior or even a hero to kill a dragon. You just need to get on and make some plans. Whilst you may find some warriors to fight your cause and a hero or two to help you out a problem along the way, you shouldn't rely on them. Knowing who the stalwart troopers and quietly reliable ones are in your team is more likely to get you to the finish line on time on target and within budget. If you have questions on this presentation, please use the provided forum in the e-learning platform. This video is part of a series of presentations used in the GBIF Biodiversity Data Mobilization course. The Biodiversity Data Mobilization curriculum was originally developed as part of the Biodiversity Information Development Programme funded by the European Union. This presentation was originally created and narrated by Sharon Grant,
with additional contributions by BID and BIFRA trainers, mentors and students. Thank you.